I'm here at CES in Las Vegas covering all of the new innovation. This is the best of CES day one, let's go. I'm partnering with Segway to check out their booth here at CES. We're gonna take a look at the X3 series, the new Navimower, let's go ahead and get started. There are a ton of new upgrades and features with the X3 series, starting with the all new EFLS 3.0. So this adds everything uh, that makes EFLS special like RTK and a VSLAM technology, but it also adds VIO or visual internal odometer. So this is pretty cool. On the older H&I series, it could tell where it was in your yard within inches, but now it can tell where you are in your yard based on the clicks of the wheel turns. It's using odometer technology as you map out your yard um, and it measures those clicks of the wheel. So as your mower mows, it knows exactly where it is within your yard. Even if you lose RTK signal, maybe you're under a large tree or you're in a smaller corridor, the mower is gonna know where it is. So you're not gonna have to worry about this venturing off into the streets. Another major upgrade to the X3 series is the mowing efficiency. This mows about two times faster than other mowers in the industry. While I was filming my B-roll, I actually caught myself having to speed up my walk to keep up with it. It actually is much faster. This is able to cover up to 500 square meters or about half an acre to two and a half acres every 24 hours, depending on your yard. Of course, AI has been a major topic here at CES, and that's no different with the X3 series Navimo mower. This incorporates AI in a variety of different ways. The new vision fence uses AI for smart mapping. The Navimo I series can identify 150 types of obstacles while the new X3 model will recognize even more. One thing that's interesting that I didn't know about the Navimo mower, and it's also present in the H and the I series, is the ability to notice the difference between shorter grass and longer grass. This is what keeps this from venturing over into your neighbor's yard. So if you're keeping your early yard nice and manicured, it sees that your neighbor's grass is a little taller than yours and it's not gonna venture over into their yard, which I thought was pretty interesting. The VSLAM uses AI to recognize different features in your garden or yard. It actually commits those to memory. That way it can uh, better enhance its optical, obstacle avoidance uh, in future cuts. It's able to re-memorize and remap even if you move things around in your yard. One of the best things that this AI can do is detect hedgehogs, which, fun fact, I didn't know this until today, hedgehogs are actually not afraid of robotic mowers and will even approach them. So this can recognize hedgehogs as well as squirrels, of course, dogs and cats and other animals like that. I thought it was interesting that they developed that to cover more than just your pets. And of course it can detect humans. Um, I tested that out by standing in front of it and it definitely avoided me. Another great upgrade they were explaining to me is they're bringing back the hub and motor design. So that's the hub and motor design from the original Segway. This helps with traction. It can also help uh, this to be able to climb higher grades of hills and it's just much more difficult for this to get stuck thanks to that hub and wheel motor. For me, the most exciting upgrade on the X3 series is this new access port over on the side. They've already developed a string trimmer, which is coming later this year, but there's plans for even more accessories that can be added through that access port. So this is gonna be able to maintain your full yard uh, you can do this remotely through the application. Um, it's gonna be an excellent product. I can't wait to get this to the house and test it out for myself. I partnered with Eureka here at CES to cover their launch event for the all new J15 Max Ultra. We kicked things off with the launch where they kind of explained all the new features on the J15 Ultra. And let me tell you, there's tons of advanced new technology in this vacuum cleaner. Before we get to the main event, there were other things to check out here at the booth, including this awesome giant gumball machine. They were using this to pick prizes for lottery entrants. They also had this really cool display of all their products, even dating back to 1909. So that was cool to see the history of Eureka products. And then of course, the star of the show, the J15 Max Ultra. I got lots of time to check out all the new features. The number one new feature on the J15 Max Ultra has to be the IntelliView 2.0. So Last year they introduced IntelliView, which can sense different types of debris and different types of liquids and can actually adjust the cleaning pattern. So when it senses wet messes, it can rotate the entire vacuum, just cleaning with the mops to avoid contaminating the, the brush or even the side brush. IntelliView AI 2.0 uses an RGB view sensor paired with infrared vision and it can actually now detect transparent liquid. So usually if you spill water on your wood floor, it's very difficult 
for you to see that it's even there because it's transparent or like milk on a white floor. Using the infrared vision 3D, this can actually see when there's transparent liquid or liquid that matches the color of the floor and it's able to actually pick that up now. My favorite new features have to be the scrub extend technology and the sweep extend technology. The way they explained it, the scrub extend technology is motorless. It actually uses centrifugal force. When it extends the mop, it's gonna hug at the edge of whatever you're scrubbing against. So the wall, for instance, or the corner, or even like, legs from your furniture. This results in 98.95% edge coverage and it can get as close as 1.36 millimeters. They've also added 7N of downward pressure while the mops extended so you can still get stubborn messes away from the floor even at the edges. With the sweep extend technology it extends that side brush and actually gets 100% coverage in corners so it doesn't miss anything in the corners or the edges. Another thing that I love about this side brush is this unique dragon claw design. So instead of this having three perpendicular particular brushes it has three that are kind of offset you still get the same cleaning coverage but instead of the hairs getting tangled around the brush it actually just forces them directly into the center brush the j15 max ultra still has the flexi razor anti-tangling center brush which can reduce hair tangling by up to 99 percent this vacuum features industry leading suction power with very impressive 22,000 Pascal. This is approaching the suction power of a traditional upright vacuum right there in your robot vacuum. The new Obstacross technology ensures that the J15 Max Ultra is going to be able to climb thresholds within your home and I was surprised to see that this can actually climb thresholds of up to 1.57 inches. This uses a secondary wheel and once the vacuum senses the threshold it goes into action uh, very easily uh, being able to overcome that threshold. Other than being able to auto empty the dustbin and clean the mops, the base station for the J15 Max Ultra actually cleans itself. So you don't have to worry about reaching down, pulling the tray out and cleaning that. This actually has a system with brushes that actively clean the base station. The J15 Max Ultra definitely looks to be a super powerful and efficient robotic vacuum cleaner. I can't wait to test it out at my house. I'm partnering today with Chef Robot to take a look at the Chef Robot. I'm not the cook of the house, so that's left to my wife. She kind of relegates me out to the grill outside, but they're telling me that you don't have to be a chef to use the Chef Robot. They're telling me that this thing's gonna do it all, teach me how to cook, and uh, that I'm gonna be able to make a good meal. We'll see about that. I'm not so sure. I'm still a bit of a skeptic, but we're gonna give it a shot and see how this turns out. So today we're gonna be making prawns and honey with white wine. It sounds delicious, but I doubt that I can make a delicious dish, but we will see. Okay, so they tell me that the machine walks you through everything and gives you step-by-step -step instructions. We're gonna see, I'm just gonna go to the search and I'm gonna search for prawns. It's over 500 recipes that are included here. So you're gonna be able to find something for anybody's taste. All right, and right there we've got prawns and a honey wine sauce that tells me it's going to take only 15 minutes to prepare. Okay, so it gives me a preview of all the steps and when I've got all my ingredients together, which we do have them together, I can go ahead and just select cook. And just like that, we're cooking guys. All right, so I'm going to take the water and it says to add 35.27 ounces. This is actually going to measure the water as I pour it in. So I can get it all the way down to the 0.27. It's going to know how much I'm putting in. All right, so we'll zero out the scale and we'll start the pour, but it's adding up the ounces as we pour. So we've got our water. We're just gonna click the next button and it says put the lid on and the measuring cup in. So we'll just click next. All right, it says we need to go for five minutes at 221 degrees. So we'll just click play. I mean, this is super intuitive. I didn't know that's what I was supposed to do, but it just shows me exactly what to do. Five minutes have elapsed. Let's go ahead and just continue the process. We'll click the next button. It says add the basket. So we're going to carefully remove the lid. Okay. Place six pieces of large prawns in the basket. All right, these are the prawns. Aren't they? They're huge. Let's see. It says six. There's a lot more than six here. Let's see. Just go for eight. Let's go for eight. Okay, so there's eight prawns. Cause you know, I'm a hungry guy. All right, so prawns are in place. Let's click the next button. Let's just put the lid on and the measuring cup in place. Lids on, we'll go next. And I've got another timer here. So I think all I have to do is press the play button and it's gonna steam the shrimp. 
So we'll go ahead and press the play button and I'll see you guys in another five minutes. Okay, so it just gave me a little ding. I've got my green button, so it's time to go to the next step. All right, so I just need to remove these from the basket. They look like they're perfectly cooked. I mean, this is what they would look like at a restaurant, so I've never cooked shrimp myself, uh, but it definitely looks correct. Okay, so we'll set these to the side and we'll remove the basket. Add two garlic cloves to the mixing bowl. Now. That's hard to come by here at CES, so instead we've got some garlic salt. So we'll add that. If I press the play button and there were garlic cloves in there, it would mince the garlic cloves for me. So if I press play, it's gonna chop those up. We don't need to do that in this case because it's already minced. So uh, we'll just skip through. Uh, 1.06 ounces of butter. All right, this looks like about an ounce to me. That's like half an ounce. Wow, we need more butter. Okay, look, we're just a little bit more, but a little extra butter never hurt anybody. So we're gonna roll with it. All right, we'll click next. And I guess we're gonna go ahead and simmer this butter and get the sauce going. So we'll click the play button and we're just gonna be here for about a minute making this sauce. So this is interesting. While it's cooking, it's actually mixing the ingredients that we put in there. We don't even have to like worry about mixing the ingredients to keep it from burning or scalding on the bottom. So I just thought that was cool. All right, step 15 is officially over. I didn't even realize this guys, but we are like more than halfway through. We're 15 of 21 steps. So we'll go to step 16, add those into the bowl. And do we have, we've got salt and pepper. I'm just gonna go like really light. If we wanna add a little bit more later, we can. And we'll just crack some pepper in there. Pour in the white wine, we don't wanna forget that. I went a little extra because I wasn't paying attention, but I think, there again, it's, it's probably okay to have a little too much white wine. We're gonna hit the next button, add honey. I'm gonna pay attention this time. It says 0.35 ounces, so I'm actually gonna watch the scale. And, okay, and we are right at 0.35 ounces, so we'll go next. We've got our six minute timer. It has the temperature set, and it's gonna be doing the mixing all for us. We'll click play, and it's gonna finish doing its thing, and then we'll have a yummy dish. We have one more step. I'm gonna see what the last step is. It says transfer to a bowl garnish with dill leaves and enjoy. So let's enjoy this meal. Okay, it looks good. Wow. Okay, definitely looks like it turned out really nice. All right, so I already tried these out. Um, I couldn't wait, and they were delicious, but I'm gonna try it for the camera. All right, let's get these peeled. All right, I'm gonna dip it in this sauce. Looks really good. It's, it's really delicious. Very surprised at how delicious this turned out. I think it turned out really good. I had a blast at the Chef Robot booth. I am totally sold. If you guys want more information about the Chef Robot, I have a link in the description where you can pick one up for yourself and find out more information. I'm partnering with April here at CES. Take a look at their booth and to cover the new Scuba X1 Pro Max, let's go. The Scuba X1 Pro Max is April's first ever all-in-one pool cleaning solution. This not only cleans the water's floor and the water's wall, but it now includes surface cleaning all-in-one machine. The Scuba X1 Pro Max is packed with smart features, including OmniSense 2.0, which includes 40 sensors and a quad-core processor that can scan your pool, identify pool walls and floors, as well as more complex areas like the water surface slopes and even elevated platforms, and helps the machine to formulate a precise map. This features the world's first adaptive map planning. FlexPath 2.0 can select optimal cleaning paths for complex platforms and layouts, delivering 100% coverage for all pools. Another really cool thing that they were demonstrating is the TVC engine. This engine is inspired by fighter jet engines. It provides upward thrust for better suction on the pool floor, a 180 degree vectoring nozzle for precise maneuverability and rearward propulsion, which can help this get around your pool surface. The included nine brushless motors produce an industry leading 8,500 gallons per hour of suction power. This is gonna be able to knock out all the debris on your pool's floor and your pool's wall. And of course, now the surface of your pool. To me, the most exciting feature has to be the Hydro Hub 2.0. I've tested lots of pool vacuums in the past and usually when the pool vacuum is under the water, you can't communicate with it. So even if it has an application, you usually can't control it 
or do any of the functions while it's cleaning the pool. You just have to wait for it to finish the job. With the Scuba X1 Pro Max and the optional Hydro Hub Pro 2, you can communicate with the robot while it's underwater. This gives you the ability to do things like um, stop the cleaning and tell it to park at the surface. This also monitors the water quality within the pool and can even give you suggestions to help improve your water's quality. Another thing that I really liked was this Caddy, which provides wireless charging. And it also has these big wheels and a handle so that you can carry this around if you needed to move this out of the way. Maybe you wanna take it over to the garage and plug that up. It just makes it very easy to maneuver and move this machine around. The Scuba X1 Pro Max is definitely a super advanced pool cleaning robot that does everything you would need for it to do. I, for one, can't wait to test this out in my pool. I spent a bit of time at the Arzen booth checking out their new Zip projector. This is the world's first tri-fold projector, and the main benefit of here is just how compact this is. When this is fully folded, it's 8.4 by 7.8 by 2.6 centimeters, and when it's unfolded, it's as thin as your cell phone. This could very easily fit into your pocket, making this the most portable projector that I've actually seen. Of course, the other thing that was super unique about this is the tri-fold design, which basically incorporates a stand into the design of the projector itself, giving you lots of versatility on where and how you can use this projector. You can rotate this projector on its side and it will project a vertical video. So if you wanna watch vertical videos on this projector or horizontal videos, you can easily do that. The included battery can run for 90 minutes on a single charge. It does project a 720p image and the brightness on this projector is 100 ISO lumens. There was a ton of ambient light on the CES showroom floor and I was still able to see the picture. That being said, they were projecting at maybe a one foot distance. So if you were to blow up the image a little bit more, it might be washed out. You probably would want to have the lights turned off with this specific projector, but this would be a very handy portable projector for the workplace. I could definitely see this as being a companion projector if you needed to do uh, presentations at work. That about wraps it up for my day one coverage here at CES. Be sure to check out all the links in the description below to find out more about the brands and products that were featured in this video.